Yo, powerful nonsenses. Hello. We're back. We are. It's Friday. Is it? It's not today, but it is oh, when this episode goes out. Yeah. Ah, it's Clever. testing you. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's on point today. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously not you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for another episode. Episode 115. I one forgot one which five. number it was then. Whew. 115. Good stuff. And uh, it's going to be a good one today. We're going to start yeah. challenging some people's thoughts on some, their Some jobs. status quos. Some status quos. I mm-hmm. love status quo. They're it's right. a guilty pleasure of mine, actually. <laughs> Rocking all over the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Classic. Leighton Orion, actually, when they win at the end of a match, they rock that out over the stadium and everyone's just, like giving it a little is that, jig. Is that, is that Football team. Football team. Don't right. worry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was, just clearing I, some, that up. Somebody spoke to me yesterday, uh, the two people at work, uh, some of the regulars there, and the one guy was like, oh yeah, he's a scum fan. And I was like... He was like oh yeah, one of those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, scum, scum. I was like, just like, this blank look, like... It's like that IT it's like crowd. Manu. You and seen, it was like, oh, right, yeah. Have you seen that IT crowd episode when they... Did you see that awful <laughs> performance <laughs> last, last night? night? Yeah. The problem with Arsenal is that they just like to walk it in. Yeah, exactly. That That's one. all you need. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, actually, uh, a friend of mine was telling me that a couple, there's a key phrase that you can use when talking football. I can't believe this podcast has turned into a football conversation. Right. People might need this advice. Um, this is the best line ever, right? So when somebody tells you who they support... If you don't like football, the best line is, um, what is it? It's like, your boys have had a season. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Because it could be good. Because it, it could be, be good. It could be bad. Exactly. That's it, yeah. And then because you said your boys as well, it looks like you know each other. Oh, right. The, the lads. The lads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, good one. That is a good one. I'm going to have so to So you, you don't go any further. I haven't further used than... it yet. But no, that's it. You just you let them You can't go any talk. further than that. That's no, it. No. You just, you just, just let agree. Because then you can gauge what oh, yeah. the position is of the team. And they can be like, oh, well, I'm manager. Blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, yeah, You'd yeah. You'd be like, what a shambles. What a yeah. shambles. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, your, that's your actual piece of advice in this episode. <laughs> if somebody talks to you about football, you have no idea what you talk, they're talking about. It's the yes. line you've got to use. Cool. So. You've always had a season. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, should we so, see yeah, what so. today's episode is actually about? Uh, yes. So today, we're talking about whether or not you should get a job, or whether or not you st- should start a business. Because it's that time of year now. Mm-hmm. Uni's winding down. College. Or College winding schools. down. Schools winding down. You're just hating your job, and you want to mix things up. Yeah. Who knows? So now you're kind of, at some some level, going to be making some big life decisions mm-hmm. if you're just coming out of some stage of education. Or, or even if you're just not too happy with your current job and thinking, maybe I should get another job. Or even an entrepreneur. Things are just not going the way you hoped. Precisely. And so you might be thinking, better get back to that job. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so we're going to kind of break it down mm-hmm. on the kinds of pros and cons of both. I guess. Yeah. 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 That'd be a good a good start. Yeah. Yeah. So where are we going to start? Uh, let's talk. I think best place to start is time. Talking about time. Time. Your control of time. Yeah, but the thing is, I was thinking that most probably people, most people are probably considering. It, I think in money first. I think. So you money asked and, me where we should start. And I know, and then I'm just going to. No, let's go with time. time. Let's go with time. We'll okay. go with time. We'll go with time. Because I think a lot of the like appeal to starting your own business. And going out on your own, there's a lot of people like, oh, well, you're free. Yes, free as a bird. Free as a bird. <laughs> uh, and that's not necessarily the case. So let's just break down the pros and cons. So uh, if you are in a job, obviously, one of the first things that's taken away from you is your control of your own time. Yeah. Because unless you're in a really nice, cushy job where they're like, oh, work from home, just get this stuff done which is becoming more and more common, but yeah, it's not, yeah. not overly common, then likelihood is you've got to be in a certain place at a certain time until a certain time. And it's on the contract, so there's no uh-huh. negotiation. Yeah, no getting out of it. That is it. Or... <laughs> That's a perfectly timed bing. Excuse me. <laughs> or... Um, <laughs> disembodied voice. Amazing. Yes, when we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> or... Or... If, hey, <laughs> if um, you're working for yourself, obviously you've got this freedom of time. Um, but word of caution, time management, if you're working for yourself, then becomes its own, own challenge. 
Mm -hmm. I think as well for people in a job, I think there is that nice routine. I think like obviously from being young, Uh you're kind of used to being in school at that time, Uh day ends at that time. Fun starts at 5 p.m., mm-hmm. 3 p.m. once it's all mm-hmm. over. And I think in some cases that's really appealing because it feels the same. But then on the other side of it, the entrepreneurship side of managing your time is that, yeah, you have freedom when you want, but then sometimes when everybody mm-hmm. else has freedom, you're working. And yeah. so, but, right. but I do think when it comes to like making that decision, I think, I know I said money was the main thing, but actually I do think time is the you one. See? You I think see? I think you was right on this one. See? Because I think can, that's... Sorry, can you say that again? I think you was right on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're going to get that as a sound bite. Yeah, just keep just reminding yeah, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think that is probably the most important thing. I think with humans, I think the main thing you want to feel is that you are in control of your life. Uh-huh. And I think that's the bit that most people resent the most is that somebody else is telling you, get right. at this desk, be at this place. And you're like, sometimes your body's like, I don't even want to be up at this hour, but somebody else <laughs> has demanded that I be there. Uh-huh. And I think that kind of takes a bit away of your kind of pride in a way. Yeah. You're kind of stuck. Yeah on somebody else's routine but you have to do it because you've got that you've got the bills to pay etc cetera, etc cetera. so i do think one of the biggest things you kind of need to think about is definitely my is definitely time and actually how much <laughs> you I, say I'm money like, please please <laughs> money Clinging no up to it. <laughs> but i did think money initially because i think uh-huh. that's a big fear for people but i think in terms of actually human nature i think you just want to feel like in control of your time mm-hmm. and i think that's the biggest appeal but then at the same time it's that kind of do you want the on and off switch i'm working at this time to this right. time and then Whereas uh-huh. I think with entrepreneurship, that on and off switch is kind of very loose. It's never you never know whether right. you're on or off. And sometimes you actually do feel like you're consistently uh-huh. on because yeah. if a call comes in from a client, you don't feel like, well, it's out of hours mm-hmm. now. You have to do that extra. Actually, I'll pick up the call. I think as well, it's it's even harder at the start when you're kind of juggling both. Because mm. I, I cannot tell you how much I crave just being able to go, day's over now. Yeah. Like a cha- real challenge I have is I have no clearly defined weekend. Mm-hmm. because my day job that I'm still at dictates that I, because I work in hospitality, so I don't have weekends, which means that I have to work the weekend, right? But then the all of the sort of acting stuff that I do, the peak of the week. Peak of the, peak week. Of the week. New new podcast coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is like uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. But my days off at the day job are Wednesday, Thursday. So like I don't have any clearly defined weekend, so that then becomes really like it can become a drain because it's a little bit unclear sometimes, and you're like, well, wait, am I on or am I off? Like, <laughs> I do think though, I do think entrepreneurship does initially it feels like you're constantly on, but I think once you get that once confidence, you get, into it. You yeah, get the swing yeah. of things. I think you've got that relationship with your clients. I think you can get to the point where you can actually be quite strict uh-huh. and say, you know what, I'm only taking calls between 9 and 10 this morning. After yeah. that, I'm, 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 you can't get through to me. Uh-huh. So I do think it is you can set the boundaries, which I think is the pros eventually of entrepreneurship. Yeah, but eventually. Then eventually, and that takes a little while before you get those in place. Yeah, definitely. But then I do think that in terms of a job, you are stuck in that actual mm-hmm. strict time zone, being at 9, go home at 5. Usually that runs over. Uh-huh. You've got your transport and stuff like that. So I don't know. For I me, love the 9 to 5 so long as... It was my business. I think you just need to know when that... I think people do talk about kind of making sure that your job feels like they say, well, you don't have an on-off switch with entrepreneurship because it should feel like uh-huh. it's your life and so you feel like it's always good. But there are stuff that you do as an entrepreneur that you don't always enjoy and I think it's kind of building in those on and off switches uh-huh. into what you do, which Definitely. is really important. Definitely. So, yeah, some it's not as... Grass isn't always greener. No, never. I think it does green. come down to like what the lifestyle you want to lead, and sometimes yeah. people do love a bit of routine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I tell you what, the more and more I've been like completely out of routine of everybody else because yeah. my day job is actually a night job. I work evenings, so mm. like my routine is so out of sync with everybody yeah. else's. It's a real struggle. It sometimes you kind of wish you could just go back to just a normal. Yeah, route. but I wouldn't want I wouldn't want the the negatives that come with that, mm. which is why I'm sticking with. <laughs> Which is why we're doing this podcast, so you can actually balance it out. Precisely. (laughs) Uh, So, on that note, let's move on to your favourite subject, Jim. It was my favourite, it's not anymore. (laughs) Yes! Well, not my favourite subject, it's just not the one that I think... It's not the one. That's that's just, that's all you need to say, it's just not the one. So we're going to talk money? (laughs) Yeah, let's talk money. (laughs) So, for me, I think, obviously, money is a massive... Mm -hmm. I think the main thing with money is that people have bills to pay, you have to put a roof over your head, Mm -hmm. you have to have a set income that you know you have a certain level of expenses per month, so it's like a non-negotiable right i have to be making a set amount per month and i think for most people 
that usually means a job is the most stable way of getting there. Mm-hmm. And I think definitely when you start out as an entrepreneur, maybe you start being a freelancer, mm-hmm. there are no like guarantees on the money you earn. Maybe you do a job here and there and it pays you two months worth of pay uh-huh. and you have to kind of put some away or maybe you don't manage your money well enough and then next month you're kind of like, shit, mm-hmm. where am I gonna, how am I going to pay for my bills? But once again, I do think it's one of those things where once you've got into the flow of things, once you've built up a little bit of a client base, once you've kind of got some contracts in place, you can right. have retention contracts where you say, look, every month I'm going to do at least X for you per uh-huh. month, which means you know I'm definitely getting £1,000, 500 mm-hmm. quid per month of this client. You can build in that sort of stability. But I think it's such a dogma that I think people have around actually a day job or that normal uh-huh. nine to five that, you know what, I know my boss has to pay me X at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And so I think what we're trying to sort of tell people is that you can have that stability, Absolutely. but you just need to build it into the thing that you're doing. Yeah. And yeah, it might take a little bit of time. For me, uh, it's taken time. I still also, don't feel like I have that direct stability. Yeah, but also it kind of goes back to what we say so many times. The difference between having the job versus having the um, the business yeah. is that with the job, you've got the one stream of income and with the business, you've got the multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. And it's all about making sure that you have a couple of backup streams of income, which are, which in the end you end up earning more money than you need because you've got them just for backup in case one falls through and then you're actually making more money. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of about making sure you're building, as you say, building that stability in, not just into the, the agreements and the contracts with your clients, but actually by having multiple clients, you've got yeah, some yeah. degree of stability. Yeah. And also, my dad's always used to say to me, and this is one thing I always bring up, <laughs> my dad always used to say to me, you will never, ever become rich working for someone else. Yeah. Well, that's because you know... Which you is not have... strictly true, but it's it's much more difficult to become wealthy yeah. working for someone else. Definitely. That's because they know you've got your set unless, salary. Of course, unless, of course, you've got a long-lost distant cousin that you never met that died in Zimbabwe. <laughs> and, you still, get, and you get an email. Are you still waiting for your check? Yeah, mate. That's shocking. I can't believe that you had a brother. In, <laughs> a brother uh, <laughs> yeah, last name Ingram. I uh, can't even pronounce his first name. Yeah, it had some sounds I didn't even know it could be in a name. But. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation marks in yeah. the name. And, I don't know. Yeah, but, but I, I think it's so true. Like going back to the money, like it is that idea that when you're in a job, you know you've got that set pay. And I think nowadays we see people job hopping all over the place just mm-hmm. to get a pay rise. And then again, we've spoke about it loads of times is that once you're in a job, you're getting paid a set price based on how much value you're going to bring to that company. Whereas with entrepreneurship, obviously, you're now getting paid your full value. You can choose as many clients as you want. You can set your prices. So they are the massive upsides. But I just think, yeah, I think money's one of those ones that initially when you're starting out, people think, oh, it's very unsafe with entrepreneurship. Right. But once you build it in, like you say, if you get those multiple streams of um revenue coming in and if that means having five clients as opposed to one Mm -hmm. it is so much safer and I think people just never think that well I'm not going to get made redundant but I've seen so many of my (laughs) old friends or colleagues that I've worked with get made redundant and it comes as a shock and then they're like shit I actually have no money coming in next month whereas I'm happy to if I lose as opposed to the 300 quid that you could have had from from that one client maybe that's still stuck with you which okay yeah he's not going to pay your bills but at but least you've got it's some money coming something. in yeah at least you can still buy food and i think that's that's the argument there is just kind of understand that yep you might be feeling like it's a stable income but actually probably the safest option and how many of these books on money and finances and being becoming rich always speak about multiple streams of income so i think it's just mm-hmm. like build that in and then you can't have a sort of safer way of earning really agreed cool and we're just coming up to the halfway point of the episode that's as a well. perfect boom. it's like it's like you planned it Jim. it's craziness it's like we planned it <laughs> which we didn't but it's like we did edit that bit out <laughs> um so yeah we're gonna take a quick wee break and then hit you with some more we're gonna points. take a wee wee break i don't need a wee i don't need a wee we're gonna take a quick break and we'll talk about sponsors and something awesome that's coming up right guys we need to take a moment to thank our sponsor. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> uh, no, University of Northampton. My God. This show would not be happening right now if it wasn't for them, I don't think. Certainly not to this level. Not to this high quality Not to this quality high quality standard. level. So a huge thank you to <laughs> University of Northampton, our old uni. Exactly. So they taught us the ways. <laughs> they taught us the ways and the force. Um, but yeah, no, honestly... Like, the thing that I think we love about Northampton Uni, over other unis, apart from the fact that we went there, (laughs) right, 
is the fact. With our limited experience of other universes. With our limited experience. No, but I mean, I know, from, I from know. my perspective, Go. wait, let me finish, let me finish. Zip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the University of Northampton is like, it's about, their, their whole kind of thing is about social enterprise. So it's not just about going there and getting a degree and leaving and hopefully getting a job. It's about going there, getting your degree, but also learning how to set up not just a business, but a social business. So it's a business that's out there to make good, positive social impact and make good social change. And the university has won so many awards for it. It so much recognition in the social enterprise space. Governments are always talking to them and stuff about how they can improve their social enterprise strategy. Honestly, if you're into social enterprise, if you're into possibly setting up a business, these guys are the uni to check out. So if you want to check them out, northampton.ac.uk, check them out. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. So guys, we want to talk to you about New Media Europe. NMEU. NMEU. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag NMEU. They'll love that. Uh, we are so excited for this event. Like, honestly, I don't think we ever thought we would be at New Media Expo. No. But we're going to be, Yes, we we're going to be, we're not just going to be there as guests. <laughs> we're going to be there as guests. We're going to be on a panel yeah, on about a, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. And we're going to be hosting the new Media Europe Awards What's going to happen if we actually win an award? <gasps> Who knows? We will have to, I, you will, I will give you the award and then you can pass we'll it back, back over to, to me that's and the then we'll one. do it, that's how it works. We'll work. figure it out. But yeah, so we're hosting awards. Never thought that was going to happen. And no, we're gonna never thought I was going to be a host, so you're going to have to give me some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you into the, the training boot camp. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be there. So, uh, tickets are selling quite quick. Very quick, Very actually. quick. I mean, some, like, are, some levels are sold out. Some levels are sold out completely. In fact, I believe there's only one type of ticket left. And I think there's only 100 of those type of tickets left. So you got to get on it, right? But if you want those tickets, just have a look. Go to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Check it out. What is NMEU, Wayne? <laughs> you know what, the New Media Expo? Yeah, what is it? Oh, we, we didn't did really... this last time. We didn't even know New Media Expo. Oh, Maybe just a really little assume. bit. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, the New Media Expo is like it's like a conference type convention type thing for all those people producing new media so podcasts youtubers uh short videos short films documentaries all that sort of stuff so anything to do with like essentially online digital content that's what it's all about it's a big get together it's happening in london uh next month mid-june um, so it's happening. We're going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Dan Miller's going to be there from 48 Days. Uh, he's like... Many other specialists in there. Yes, many, many, many specialists. Including about many different things. There's going to be workshops <laughs> about how you can set up your new media businesses and things like that. So much good stuff. Honestly, it's going to be great. It's all on the website to see. To be all honest. on the website. So yeah, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. That's our link. will take you straight to all of the breakdown of what you can expect and a little button to register and buy your tickets. Cool. Check it out. We are back. Hello. Thanks for staying. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> we didn't have a wee. No. But we did have a break. One. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're talking about jobs versus business and the pros and cons to both. So one of the things which I think we both love about uh, entrepreneurship yeah, is the ability to and it's something we always talk about on the podcast as well is the fact that it's this constant learning curve and this constant battle for self-improvement making yourself more productive making yourself healthier so you can be more productive making yourself more efficient at building relationships and all that sort of stuff which takes time to learn and build versus the day job the day job which is like you need this done by the end of the day or else. Yeah, I think it is. It just doesn't give you the time. I mean, obviously you learn things on the job, but I don't think it's so much quite the self-development. Uh, and do you know what I mean? It's very limited scope as opposed to a much wider scope. Yeah, I think if you listen to a lot of the sort of stats that people... And now I know a lot of companies are like paying for their um, staff to get trained now each mm-hmm. year because staff do. That's one of the big reasons why staff don't stick around is because they feel like, mm. I've been doing this job for five years. I haven't learned anything new. I do the same thing week in, week yeah. out. 
And I think it is because you're so busy. I think that a lot of people that work in nine to five are literally just trying to get their job done at the end of the week mm-hmm. and then that's it. Whereas I think the thing with entrepreneurship is that actually you've got the time to kind of hone your craft. You can learn, right. you can do new courses, you can read books in your own time. Like, whereas I think all that stuff, all that self growth, all that kind of learning a little bit more, doing a course on the weekend, I think you're kind of so zapped from your week at work, mm-hmm. so much time in the office that actually it's the last thing you want to do is now pick up a book about the thing that you do at work and you're just like, you know what, forget it. And I just right. think for me, I, I what I also think, which is really important about entrepreneurship is because when you're into that nine to five, you get a bit stagnant in what you do. You're good at it and you're doing it consistently day in, day out. But what you don't actually see is that sometimes the industry is changing. Right. And yeah. so that's the cost. Yeah, I haven't thought about that. That's the cost that I think people have, especially being in a nine to five. You're doing your job and you're doing it great, but then you're oblivious to what's actually going outside in the right. industry. So you're not going to conferences to see what's the latest trends. You're not kind of putting yourself out there where you're trying to actually just find new knowledge right. in that industry. Yeah. And then sometimes that can just sting you in the ass. You've been one of these old school marketers who thought that it's all about newspapers and suddenly <laughs> uh, <laughs> social media comes along and blows your job out of the water and now they want somebody who understands it. Mm-hmm. And I know that's happened to a lot of people. And so, so I think that's the cost that you need to remember that when you have a job, if you aren't putting the time into actually continuing learning and kind of honing mm-hmm. that craft, it's going to cost you later on. Yeah, Whereas okay. actually an entrepreneur is learning all this stuff and actually increasing their value mm-hmm. because now they're constantly learning. They've got all the knowledge. They're kind of put themselves out doing all different courses. And I think that's it. People are willing to then pay you more money because you seem to know exactly what you're doing. And I right. think I'm finding that with my clients now. They've kind of worked with people in the past, yet they kind of feel like, I'm like saying, it's, I always feel that because we talk a lot about digital marketing stuff we know stuff quite ahead of a lot of people Mm. and it seems like shocking to them but to us it's really obvious yeah and i think that's the thing when you're outside you can see the bigger picture you can see the vision of where it's heading before everybody else because they're too Mm -hmm. busy head down at the desk and so that's the danger i think of actually getting in that nine well it's just like the simple conversations of when you say like your website's not mobile responsive Mm. and people go yeah and you're like yeah but it's really going to damage your marketing ability and they're like serious like (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because to you, it's like basic knowledge. But to them, as you say, it's like they're so busy on actually the getting the tasks that they need to get done. And things are ticking over for them. And maybe they well, well, we're still getting clients. But then you're like, yeah, but you don't realize if you look to your analytics, you're finding more people are over the last two years, more people are on mobile and you're actually going down on the amount of leads you're getting. And then you're like, oh, that's a problem. But people aren't looking at that because yeah. they're like, we've got the other stuff to do yeah, first. because they've got their task list that their yeah. managers Which you, I think is a massive danger, really. I think so. Totally agree. Um, and so that kind of, as you say, kind of goes on to one of the next points that we want to talk about, which is about this um, problem-solving thing that comes mm. with entrepreneurship versus having a job. Yeah. Like, as you kind of alluded to, people in their job, they're dealing with the same tasks day in, day out. You've usually got a person assigned to a specific task yeah which just happens over and over on repeat on repeat on repeat and so uh, their skills aren't developing they're not doing the learning uh, but also they're they're the kind of blinkered yes <laughs> the the lens they're looking through everything with is so fixed whereas mm-hmm. um when you're running a business particularly if it's a small business mm-hmm. and you're self-employed or whatever you've got to deal with the marketing you've got to deal with the finance you've got to deal with uh, networking, you've got to deal with actually the skills that you, and your, the service that your uh, business delivers, everything. Mm-hmm. You've got so many hats that you've got to wear that your perspective is constantly changing. And, it, you know, it could sometimes just be a case of like, okay, we're doing this because this is something that we're passionate about versus, but we also need to do this because that's what's going to bring the money in. Mm-hmm. And so you, you're constantly having to change. It's making me think of the uh, the hats, the hats six thinking hats the six thinking hats yeah um the fact that particularly if you're a solo entrepreneur you're constantly having to change put on a different hat we're gonna have to link up to that yeah but the concept being that that there are these six different types of hats which have all got a different color and when you're brainstorming an idea you're meant to basically switch between these metaphorical hats. You don't actually have to go out and buy some hats. It's fine. <laughs> uh, these metaphorical hats of a different colour, which which means if so, they've got the black hat, yeah, which yeah. is the one that goes, oh, no, it's rubbish. It's yeah. rubbish. It's never going to work. And then you have to kind of think of it through that lens to try and work out if there is an answer to and mm-hmm. if you can defunct that argument. And then you've got the other hat, which is, like I think, the white hat, which is like, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, optimistic. Yeah, kind of, could not yeah. go wrong. Foolproof. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that that's an interesting thing, which you don't. I don't think you really get in a job. Sometimes you do. Depends just, where you are, I suppose. I just think the main thing is because you're doing the one task, I don't think you see the overall picture, which is why people try to make meetings come together, but everyone's like, I'm so busy on my task that I'm not going to communicate with you. And so, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't come to the meeting. My yeah. to-do list is far too big. Yeah, exactly. And so I think when you are doing it on your own, you see the whole vision, and then that way I think you definitely have more... You're like you're more creative of what you do because you can see how one thing as it like impacts another aspect of the role, mm-hmm. which I think is really important. But on that subject as well, the kind of I think was you mentioned like a little bit about passion and how actually mm-hmm. that passion for what you do. I think a lot of the time people that the idea that you're doing the same thing over and over in your job actually kind of dulls your passion for what you oh, do so much. And I think that's why entrepreneurship can also be quite fun because actually you're constantly learning, so you're getting new challenges constantly thrown at you, mm-hmm. and so you've actually got the passion behind what you're doing uh-huh. to learn more about the aspect that you're doing rather than feeling like, well, I just do the same thing over and over. Uh-huh. And so actually I don't really have the energy or the passion to go and try read a new book or kind of explore right. another area or think creatively and hope that maybe my boss might sign off on it. But there is the danger, of course, with that, that you end up chasing the passions more than actually the business. Yeah, Which that means that actually you end up going... <laughs> We're getting a lot of beats today. That's my today. front door. Whoops, do you need to grab it? I do need to grab it. Better grab it. So who was at the door, Wayne? Uh, it was a delivery person and not even delivering me any goodies. What a pain in the ass. I know. See what we have to put up with. I know. Ridiculous. So where, what, what were you we saying? We need a proper anyway? studio. We do. Uh, yeah, so I, I was going to say, like, the danger is that if you just... Uh, we were saying about passion, right? Yeah. And, how, and how the passion can then drive the business mm-hmm. and the development and all that sort of stuff. But the point we were going to make was that you're very much in danger if that's the reason for starting your business over necessarily having a job if that's the only reason you could very much be in danger of actually chasing the passion rather than the business which means you're just going to end up procrastinating and going oh yeah but I don't want to fill out the finances and do all my projections yeah, and stuff yeah. because actually designing these business cards is really fun yeah, yeah, and I'm really enjoying designing this new logo and stuff that may not necessarily matter if your service sucks yeah, I definitely think that's a sort of problem that really early entrepreneurs have, especially if you've gone from having a nine to five and then you're now thinking, yeah, I'm going to get into this entrepreneurship thing and I get mm-hmm. to do all the things I love. And then you come out and you think, yes, I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to do, like you say, the designing logos, get my website going. And that feels fun. And you neglect the business side and then you mm-hmm. fail. And it's kind of like, I do think you have to kind of understand that you have that freedom to do the things that you enjoy, such as reading and this and that. But at the end of the day if you are going to be a business and you want to be sustainable, I do think you need to kind of have some sort of, I don't know, cap on, mm-hmm. okay, it's great that you're passionate about it, but how is this having a business sort right. of effect? And is this going to actually bring in money in the long run? And I think that's sort of a balancing act that everybody has to get Absolutely. to, because I'm the same. Sometimes it takes me ages to bloody send out an invoice. Mm-hmm. I've done the work. It's all good, but it's like, oh, invoices are so long to mm-hmm. do. And I can't be asked like, well, actually, Jim, you kind of need that money in your account. So, <laughs> I do think it's, it's one thing I never struggle getting. Out I know you really do. Quick. You do ping oh, yeah, invoices on like it, on the invoice. I'm like, work's done. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is one thing. I don't know why that is with me, but yeah, I tend maybe, to kind of. Maybe it's because I'm using FreshBooks and you're using something else. Could be. Who knows? And FreshBooks makes it fun. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Cheeky plug for FreshBooks. I <laughs> uh, love FreshBooks. Um, okay. So um, yeah, now this is this is a point that I think is actually also really important. Is this relationship driven versus ladder driven? Mm. Which I think doesn't get talked about all that much, actually. Yeah. I well, what's your angle on this actually? Because I want to hear what you say. Because I know I put this point in there. Well, so. because, like for me, um, this it's there's something much more appealing and much more, uh, I think, beneficial in all areas of your life about. Uh, entrepreneurship which is the fact that it's all about building solid strong partnerships relationships with clients partners potential customers um and everybody like on your team if you're outsourcing like marketing and you just develop a really nice network almost out of necessity that just kind of you kind of need each other to keep each other afloat right it's kind of like a collective right whereas i feel like the job thing being ladder driven is it's all about brown nosing <laughs> yeah and it's all about going above and beyond yeah and 
ex- and not getting any reward for doing it until somebody above you goes, all right, we should probably throw them a bone now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's like about it's almost like this kind of like I have to prove myself to somebody that might not necessarily. <laughs> I, I'm a. I don't. I don't like. A, I've seen too much, uh, but like that doesn't necessarily have any right to judge you on your abilities because they're not necessarily qualified themselves. They've just ended up in a management position because, you know, they. No, I'm not going to say that. Wait, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to hold back on that. On I'm going to hold back okay. on that. But do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I think as well. I think because when you're in a company as well, I'm just I think... really cynical about that that whole thing well I think it is I know people if you co- if you're ever going to go into a 9 to 5 and have the mentality that I'm going to have to job hop a lot uh-huh. before I get a pay rise and mm-hmm. get to that position I want or it is I've literally got a brown nose and make people right. feel really good about themselves I, and with the I, hope that they'll then say oh you know what you've been doing good this month and you've been coming in at 6 o'clock every morning and leaving at 10 right. which is the way that you jump the ladder and they think yeah. well he puts in the work let's give them a promotion which I do think it is that kind of sleaziness and I think in a company as well you you don't really need each other because the company is the entity right. in itself, and so exactly. it's kind of about as well. you're expendable. Yeah, I you find. are, and so it's not about your one to one relationship. It's like, well, you're the gatekeeper to my next level, mm-hmm. and so I need to be nice to you. Right. And then once I'm half past you, I don't have any sort. Of, I don't need you right. anymore. So it's I get a bit what you're doggy saying. Doggy dog, and I don't. No, that's not the way I like to work. I don't like to be transactional and like. Oh, I'm only being nice to you because you might pay me more one day. Yeah. Whereas, like you say, I think that's the thing of entrepreneurship. Maybe I that's think... why I rub people up the wrong way in the workplace. Wow. You're just not made, you're <laughs> just not, not made to be in a sort no. of corporate or business. I'm industry. just like, why are you telling me to do that? When you, you that, just do it. <laughs> we won't get into that. No. Wayne's got some issues. He's no. working through we, <laughs> the therapy. That's it. Deep breaths. No, I just I just don't like that. that yeah. I know what you mean. It is that system in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. And if you've just got that manager at the front of your name, then it kind of gives you rights to say. Right. And yeah, I'm just silly. Whereas I do think... I'm not built for employment anymore. I've yes. seen too much. He's seen too much. I've seen too much. But I do think what you said is really important. And it's the, the main reason why we sort of promote entrepreneurship. I think it's because you generally have each other's back. And right. I think when you make a meeting with someone, even though that meeting was for you initially, and maybe you could get to that meeting, actually, it's probably better for the friend you know to kind uh-huh. of do business with this person. You kind of always feel like you're all promoting each other right. and you all got each other's best interests at heart. I do think when you're working with your clients, you actually are doing it because you actually both want to win right. and you know that together, if we, if I can help you make more money, you'll do business with me right. more often. And so it does feel like it's that constant win-win relationship rather than literally you're just a stepping stone to my next stage in life. Right, right. Yeah, the stepping stone thing. I think that's a nice way of putting it. It's all about them stepping stones and mm-hmm. I, don't, I just don't like that way of working. I just yeah. don't anymore. So we should probably start rounding things up. Yeah, I know we're coming to the end of the episode. As well. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to touch on, Jim? I think we've covered most of it. I want to say, number one, that we are highly biased. <laughs> of course. <laughs> As you've probably just heard from my reaction yes. to the ladder versus the yeah. relationship thing. I do think a lot of these things when it comes to jobs and entrepreneurship, I think ultimately you set the boundaries. You uh-huh. have your values on what you stand for and what you don't yeah. stand for. I think <laughs> if you don't mind brown nosing, by all means. Yeah, I mean, but that's what I mean. But you might be a really genuine person that be in relationships and it works great for you. So I uh-huh. do think this is just our opinions on it. And I do think at the end of the day, there are pros and cons to both. It depends whether this sort of lifestyle fits the way you want to live. Absolutely. And ultimately, I do think number one, and I go back to what you said at the beginning, I'm happy you put time as the number one thing that we need to consider. Ultimately, we want to have control oh, over yeah, our I'm lives. I'm going to super edit this video. And He's going to love gonna, that. It's going to be on loop. It's gonna, I'm going to do like an eight hour YouTube video. <laughs> of just you going, you were right, Wayne. You were right. right, Wayne. You were right See, on this one, Wayne. Ego. Wayne, you were right. We're going to do one an episode on ego soon. Yeah, and that will be the episode. Oh, okay. Wayne, you were right. Just reinforcing <laughs> it to everyone listening, just so yes. that when they meet me, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is Wayne. You were right. right. You were right. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap things up. I want up. that as a t-shirt as well. Wayne, you were right on this one. Let it go, Wayne. Let it go. Hashtag Wayne, you were right. You can tweet me. If you believe Wayne was right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just want to sort of wrap it up to say that I think time is so important because I think at the end of the day, that's the thing we're all got uh-huh. in a finite amount. And so I think it, you have to really figure out how you want to live your life. And I think... For me, for you, I think entrepreneurship is the way to have the most control of your time. And so, hey, you've got to make the decision at the end of the day. Amen to that, brother. Yep. Cool. So, on that note, we shall start wrapping up. Yes. So, two things. Three things. Oh, God. Several things. Go on. First of all, if you've been listening for a while on the podcast app, 
please do us a favour. We need those reviews. We need them. It literally takes two minutes. I think they've made it a lot easier as well nowadays. Uh huh. I think you can actually do it on your phone. Yes, I think you can. But if you're on the desktop, we have we have a guide. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash review. 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 Link, we'll link it up. I think that's the link. We yes. did that a long time ago. It's all on there. Please just leave that review because honestly, it helps. It's the best thing to get word out about the show you can do. You don't even have to share it on Facebook or anything. You literally just write the review and iTunes and Apple do the rest. Pumps us right up the rankings. Right at the top. So please, that will be a massive, massive help. Yes. If you're li- watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. And the thumbs. And the thumbs up. And we will, we will love you forever. Wicked. So thanks very much for tuning in, guys. And we shall catch you.